Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Marvel 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at their first Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse figure and we're kicking off the line with none other than Spider-Gwen and Spider-Ham. So yeah, I'm super excited to get them out here. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. The link for that is of course down in the description below. They do have 12 month installment plans and an awesome reward system. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art for Gwen Stacy and Spider-Ham. You can very clearly tell Hot Toys had a ton of fun designing this artwork. There are a lot of colours at play, a lot of different elements from the film such as the skyline and also the multiversal particle collider explosion and you do also have a ton of awesome dynamic poses. It's also worth noting that this box is an oversized box. It's a lot larger than what we'd usually see from Hot Toys. Not because the figures inside are huge, but because you get an awesome backdrop with this set. Now of course, dotted around the box we do have various images of both Gwen Stacy and Spider-Ham on either side as well. I particularly like this one where he's peeking down from the top, and then of course on the other side, two different images. On the back we have a massive image of Kingpin. Some people have said that this could be Hot Toys hinting at them in fact potentially making a Kingpin sometime down the line. I don't know if that's true, but if they are, yeah, I'm all for it. Now seeing as this is an oversized box, there's only one way to gracefully unbox it on camera, so... Here we have them in their clam tray, and as you can see, they don't take up a ton of room in the plastic here. So yeah, that backdrop really is the culprit for making the box as large as it is. And I think it'll start to make sense when we assemble it and you see how badass it truly looks. But here we have Gwen. This is an entirely new body. First impressions are very positive. She both looks and feels almost exactly like you'd expect her to based off the animation. It's a very thin and slender frame. Now we do have one more figure up the top here and it of course is Spider-Ham. I'm a huge fan of the fact that they decided to give this guy to us in this set and we'll discuss that a little bit more in just a second. Now you do get a ton of bits and pieces, so what we are going to do now is get all of their accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything they come with. Here we have all the parts and pieces that go with Gwen. Now starting off with the display base first, it's a very familiar sight. You can tell that once again Hot Toys had a ton of fun designing this graphic for the top here. You have to the Spider-Verse front and center, then Gwen's nameplate in this beautiful pink text. I also love the fact that they've gone with a white display base. They pretty much never do this, but this will tie in perfectly to her outfit. You also get a white dynamic flight pole so it will match the display base itself, and then for the top you get a waist clamp. This one is done in black, but that makes sense because from her lower half down her suit is entirely black, so this should mesh. It is also one of the smaller style waist clamps, and you do have a little bit of that foam padding on the inside, but still, if you're using this, be careful, because it can apply just a little bit too much force on the outfit and leave some marks. Now being a Spidey character, she of course comes with the usual webs. You do get this one tray with some shorter ones and the ones that can be used for swinging, but this one is still by far my favourite. It's the more modern spooled up style web, it's just a little bit more dynamic. Now the interesting thing about the way they've done Gwen's hands is you have a separate pair entirely with this little web spool attachment. That's the piece you actually peg the webs into because the standard hands don't have any attachment method and her web shooters aren't visible, so I'm really glad they did that. 
they also printed this gorgeous triangular metallic style pattern on the back of her hands, which does tie in to the outfit itself. You do have a few handheld accessories, the first of which is her physics book, and there is actually some text printed on the inside, it's just repeating. I'm not exactly sure what it says because it is extremely tiny, but you do have some details on the inside of the book, which is a really nice touch. You also get a teeny tiny little real reflective mirror, so of course she can be checking out the side of her hair that was unfortunately shaved off thanks to Miles. You also get a smartphone with that selfie of Gwen and Miles. I really like that they actually printed something on the screen. Gone are the days where Hot Toys just gave us a blank screen. This is something that hopefully they keep doing as we get more smartphones with figures. Now you also get this unmasked or handheld Gwen mask. It has that same sort of textured print on the surface and the eyes are pre-attached. Before you ask, no, this can't actually be installed on the Gwen Stacy head sculpt because you have an entirely separate one that's already wearing the mask, which we'll talk about in just a second. But let's take a moment to admire this absolutely stunning sculpt. It's really impressive. I love the texture of the hair. It might just be one of the best hair pieces that I've ever seen, because it's exactly that. It's a separate piece pegged onto the head, which creates a little bit of depth as it comes over the top. You have that shaved side with a little bit of texture, and then this awesome gold paint to replicate blonde hair. You also can see the roots up the top. The eyes look fantastic, and even though it is an animated sculpt, there is still a little bit of skin texture just to make it look even more realistic. So yeah, I'm loving this head sculpt. Now, to go along with that sculpt, you get the sort of hood that sits down over her shoulders. There is a magnet on the back, but it very simply slides over her neck peg, and you can see that awesome blue and pink web pattern on the inside there, which is also replicated on the inside of the hood that's pre-attached to the mask. I love this. That means this is a fully sculpted piece. There's no worries about wires or getting it to sit right. It will look perfect every single time. And that definitely is a win. Unfortunately though, you can't have her without the hood on. It's prefixed to the masked sculpt. Now you do have the interchangeable lenses which you can just wedge your fingernail under and remove. And then of course you have a variety of different options, ranging from fully wide open too fully squinted. I'm not exactly sure which ones I'm going to go with yet, but I do love this metallic lenticular effect to the lenses themselves. They kind of blend off into a little bit of blue, and there's pink on this side. I'm thinking of something like Robocop's paint scheme, where it has a bunch of different pearlescent colors in the lens itself. Trust me, it's a really nifty effect. What we are going to do now though, because there is one more accessory to take a look at, is get Spider-Ham himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have him. I had to take a look at him separately because to me, Spider-Ham is more than an accessory. I love that they included this piece. The sculpt is flawless. It looks exactly like Spider-Ham did in the film, and it's of course in the pose where we first meet him. His hands were wet because he just washed them, for no other reason. They also have included a little bit of a water print down below, just to kind of hint that this is the scene they were going with. I also love that he does have his accurate little curly tail out the back and his folded over pig ears. I also love that on the snoot he also has some spidey eyes. It just adds a ton more personality. So yeah, I'm super glad we got him. Now he does actually come with his own backdrop piece. It's the mallet some hot dogs and a boom onomatopoeia word printed on the back. It's translucent, it has these little stand feet, so you can just simply have it sitting in the background. It's an awesome compliment for Spider-Ham. Here we have her standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, and it's perfect. 
there's no two ways about it. I, for one, am incredibly happy here. Now, they've done some very unique stuff, specifically with the brand new animated style body, which we will touch a lot more on in just a second, but just know that it's specific to this figure, and it makes it look incredibly accurate to the movie. It's something that other companies have tried to do, but they've made fully jointed versions. This is entirely seamless, which makes me very happy. And yeah, this is now my favourite Gwen Stacy in the display. I love the suit, I love the accessories, and the way it all comes together, it looks flawless. What we are going to do now though is take her off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have her up close and personal. Now don't worry, in just a second we will be swapping out the head sculpt to see what the unmasked one looks like on the body, cause I for one am very curious to see it. Now speaking of the body, we may as well address it first, because Hot Toys have given us an entirely new one specifically for Gwen. I mean, she had to look like she did in the film, so this was their only option. And I'm glad that they did this. It means she's super accurate, and it also means that we have a brand new body, so going forward, if another Spider-Verse character needs to use a super slender and lanky body just like this, they totally have one ready to go. For those who don't know, when it comes to figure manufacturing, it's not accessories, or head sculpts or outfits that are the most expensive things to produce, it's the unique bodies. Because of the sheer number of moving parts that have to combine together, the R&D that's required so the joints aren't too brittle or thin and they break, and the brand new steel moulds. So that's why I was so very surprised that Hot Toys decided to make this particular figure. But I'm really glad they did. Now let's talk about the outfit. I love the way it looks. She does have those little triangles dotted around the entire suit. The white ones do present a little bit more metallic, as you'd expect, and they match perfectly with the fully sculpted hood. Yes, there is more texture on the suit versus the hood itself, which is a little bit smoother, but it still, from a distance, looks like it's made of the same material. Now, on the black section, she does still have the triangles, but they don't have that metallic sheen over the top. It's more of a matte black. I also love the suggestion of a spider logo in the negative space on the back here. It's very subtle, but you can clearly make out the legs and the top of the spider. It's a lovely effect. Now, she also does have a pop of colour on the inside of her arms, with this very vibrant hot pink and the equally as vibrant blue, which ties into the inside of the hood. It just brings the entire thing together very well. Now, coming down to the legs, they are just entirely done in the black fabric, but down below we have another pop of colour with the ballet shoes. She does have those flat toes and soles underneath, and these little straps are actually integrated into the suit. They aren't separate pieces, as you can see the stitching does carry on through that groove there. That means you don't have to worry about them getting dislodged or moving around the place, they are very nice and secure. And of course, the shoes themselves are in proportion with the body. Now I'm pretty sure you'll want to see that unmasked head as much as I do, so there it is. And yeah, it looks perfect. It's not too big, it's not too small, I love the hood, how it very simply and easily magnetises to her back. I am potentially a little bit worried about that point right there, digging into the suit material, but fingers crossed it won't be an issue. I was initially worried that the head would look a little bit too large, I mean, it is oversized to go with that animated look, but not too much so. It still fits in perfectly, and you all know I love this sculpt, I told you earlier, it's glorious, the hair looks awesome, the paint applications are fantastic, and I am very tempted to display my Gwen wearing this sculpt in the display. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Miles Morales from the PS5 game. Now I know it's not technically the right Miles, but as of the time of filming this video, the Into the Spider-Verse Miles hasn't been released just yet. You all know I'm really excited to get that guy, and as soon as he's out we will be doing a proper 
comparison with this Gwen, but for now, this is the one we've got. As you can see, she is substantially shorter. She's also a lot slimmer accurate to the super stylized animated look of the film and not so realistic. So I don't think you could pop this Gwen alongside your MCU Spidey figures, but I guess if you really wanted to, you could totally put her in there. Speaking of which, here we have that MCU Spidey, specifically the Homecoming version. Even Tom Holland's Spidey, who is a little bit shorter, is still taller than this Gwen, so it should give you a good idea as to the size and scale of this brand new body. It truly is very petite, but these styles are significantly different here. Very stylized, very animated look versus MCU Spidey, which goes a little bit more realistic, specifically with the musculature and the proportions here. But as I said just a second ago, if you wanted to, you could totally put them in the same display, especially if you're doing some kind of multiversal Spideyverse display. That could work really well. And of course, because they do come in the same set together, here we have Spider-Ham and Spider-Gwen. These two look awesome. They're both from the same film. It makes total sense. I am hoping that we round out the team. We get Peter B. Parker, we get Penny Parker and SPDR, and then finally Spider-Man Noir to have the complete set but I'm pretty sure Hot Toys have let that boat sail, and I don't think they're going to, so fingers crossed some other companies decide to give us those characters. Just going over articulation on Gwen Stacy. Now, bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, I have gone with the masked one. If you go for the unmasked one, you may potentially get slightly more range because you don't have this hood to contend with. Going forward to about there, going back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. But bear in mind the wide flared nature of the hood does mean it collides with the shoulders so you get slightly less pivot. Going up for the arms on super sturdy ratchet joints, forward on back on equally as sturdy and clicky ratchets. You do have a butterfly joint at the shoulder, a swivel at the bicep, a single bend at the elbow, which I know will upset some people, but due to the super slim nature of the arms, I think that makes total sense. You do have a super teeny tiny 1-6 scale wrist peg. As for the torso, it crunches both forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs themselves will go forward to there. They will go out on ratchets the full way. That's an incredible range of motion. Swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend on ratchets at the knee, and of course, lastly, a ball joint for the ankle. Just going over the three cool and three annoying things with Gwen Stacy. The first annoying thing isn't this pre-sculpted hood, because spoiler alert, that's actually one of the cool things. It's that you can't remove it from the masked head sculpt. I would have preferred if there was a magnet in the top of the hood and a magnet in the head sculpt so it still would have moved and worked flawlessly together, but if you wanted to, you could separate this sculpt from this hood. Unfortunately, it is fixed, and that means doing stuff like trying to remove the eyes which are tucked up underneath the mask pretty much always results in them falling behind and getting a little bit more difficult to put in place. The second annoying thing, and I guess technically it's not an annoying thing so much as an observation, but she's using an entirely new style of wrist peg. They are absolutely tiny, so if you do put any pressure on them going the wrong way, they could potentially snap. You only get two extra of these particular pegs, and because this figure is using an entirely new style body and wrist peg, if you are looking for replacements, they're going to be almost impossible to find. The third annoying thing, and this is probably just specific to mine and could potentially be a total non-issue, but as you can see right here on the thigh, from unboxing her and her sitting in the plastic clam tray for quite some time as she was shipped from Hong Kong, there is a little bit of a glossy spot on the outfit. It's 
it's almost invisible, but when the light catches it at the right spot, you definitely can see it. The first cool thing is the inclusion of Spider-Ham. You're technically getting an entirely separate character in this set, so much so that I am very tempted to call it a two-pack. I know he's technically just a static pre-sculpted piece, but he has a ton of personality and presence all on his own. I am hoping still that one day, somehow, some way, we get a fully articulated version, but if we don't, this guy right here is still an awesome Spider-Ham figure for the shelf. The second cool thing is the backdrop. When it's fully assembled, it truly is a sight to behold. It's super colourful, it's super artistic, and very dynamic. Yes, it will command quite a large space on your shelf, but if you have the space, I reckon this is totally something you should use. It takes a relatively small figure that could otherwise get lost in the sea of spider people and makes her a true centerpiece. I hope that going forward, if we do get even more Spider-Verse characters, I'm looking at you, Peter B. Parker and Spider-Man Noir, then they go ahead and include even more backdrops like this, because it truly sets this figure over the top. The third cool thing is the way they did the hood and the masked head sculpt. It's super seamless. I said this earlier on in the accessory segment, but I love the fact that we don't have to worry about wires and getting it to sit right. It's pre-sculpted, it'll look perfect every single time. Yes, it does move along with the head sculpt, but that means you don't have any worries about it getting out of alignment. It's just going to look flawless every time. Just wrapping up on Gwen Stacy by Hot Toys. Now, going into this, I was really excited, of course, because I love the movie. I mean, if you haven't seen it, pause this, go ahead and watch it, then come back and you'll probably appreciate this figure even more. I mean, that film won an Oscar, that's how good an animated film can truly be. Now, I personally didn't exactly know what to expect, because this is an entirely new style of figure from Hot Toys. I didn't know if it was going to be fragile feeling or a little bit inaccurate, but luckily it all comes together very nicely. I love the accessories, the outfit is on point, and then we get to the body. It's exactly like I would expect it to be based off the film. The proportions are perfect. Very stylized, long, lanky limbs, but it's covered by a full suit, so it's entirely seamless. And then we have the stunning head sculpt. Again, very faithful to the movie. It's also outside of their wheelhouse. It's something different. It's an animated sculpt. Now Hot Toys are doing more animated stuff. It definitely opens up the door for even more characters from this film, specifically from the second one, whenever that one is due to come out. But still, at the end of the day, do I recommend picking up this figure if you're a fan of the movie? Absolutely. In fact, I'm pretty sure if you're a fan of the film and of Hot Toys, you already have this one and Miles on pre-order. But if you don't, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is, of course, down in the description below. They have 12-month installment plans and an awesome reward system. While you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.